fingers. But we are live here with the second map of the UGC Gold Highlander Grand Finals. And it looks like we do have a build going up in tunnel right here for Zed, who is on defense first. Yeah, this is typically what you see. Uh, it's really, really what you want your engineer to be doing. Um, I see it more so poking out so that it denies the jumpers instead of being actually set inside. But let's see if he actually moves it uh, otherwise. But I'm pretty just going to keep it there. Basically making their entire team forced into that tunnel to pop the river before they get in. We will see we do have the battle for the roof here on the left between a blue soldier and red soldier. It's usually the uh, the standard. John Milter going down immediately, but taking down MJ with him. So a um, little bit of a sniper advantage already for red, so it means that uh, that uh, Mafio can peek out a little bit. He did take a lot of damage and actually does go down right there, but took Bosch with him. So Blue now bringing their medic out of spawn. It's yeah, actually they... by himself. There we go. Connects with the demo man. Yeah, they got confirmation that the gun wasn't behind the fence, that it was inside the tunnel. So they knew that's where all the red players were going to be, and so that he was kind of free to just poke as he wanted. Caspian took a. Uh... About 50 damage right there, so popped right in front of the tunnel. They're not going to be able to get anywhere near this because, again, some nice uh, flashing work going on from, or air blasting work going on from Prophet, but in comes Bosch, gets the sentry gun with that sapper, and uh, Zed just had to fall back after that sentry gun was pretty much abandoned. Yeah, basically what happened was that uh, Leilauch just kind of gave up on his defense. He didn't want to die, and that's really a good thing to do on Swiftwaters. You don't want to die as an engineer. You want to stay alive. You're pretty much the medic for your team. So he just he got out while he knew he could and pretty much just let his team take, take over for him. He's already got a level 2 up at second right here, so it really was a good decision. It could come surprising to some because that cap time at 57 seconds seems extremely fast for the first round, uh, for the first cap point. But like you said, uh, about a minute is about average. Uh, here on second though, we should expect Zed to put up a much more top fight and uh, we'll see how CG decides to counter it. And again, remember these are players who are, um, a lot of Sixes players who this, I think, have, um, this may be the, most of their first season in Highlander. So we'll see how they take to the second point in Swiftwater, which, um, you can be very creative with at times, or sometimes you can just play it straight. Go through the tunnel with the cart, or you can um, come in from these uh, locker rooms that are uh, directly opposing and up on the bridge, and that's actually what we're seeing right here from CG. Pop on the demo man, he's putting a lot of spam on that sentry gun, but uh, looks like Lelouch is doing a great job keeping it alive with that rescue ranger. And Blue not able to get anything with that. Mafio did go down, but so far, a really nice defensive hold in terms of uh, keeping players alive for Red. Oh. The engineer was just sitting on the cart and there was nobody there to kill him, so he was able to just push right through and get the cap. Netobi goes down, two to a headshot from John Milter, so we do have a backwards teleporter, and I think that Lelouch was able to take his sentry gun with him, so we will have a level 3 already at uh, third, so love this um, NG action from Lelouch. But yeah, like you said, no matter, it doesn't matter how many frags and stuff, if the cart is moving, the cart is moving. Yeah, it's something that he really does really well, is just stays alive, and he really likes those backward teleporters, so that he can get to the next point and be able to defend that with his sentry gun. Looks like it did go down though, so he may just have to fall back again to, to fourth. But his team definitely wants to put forward uh, some sort of hold right here because this can be one of those um, chokes that can easily be held down. We do have a combo holding house right there and um, looks pretty good. What do you think about this hold? This is definitely where you see teams start to really slow down. This is where you start to see those 11 minute cap times on Swiftwater. Because pushing into third, fourth, and fifth are definitely the hardest points. Third is just too choky. Every single point that you have to push through is just a gigantic choke. Then on fourth, everything is so wide open. And then on last, it's just impossible to get in because the spawns are right there. See, one of those important features of this hold is having the soldier on the opposite uh, way. We are going to see a soldier battle right here. Age is going to take most of that damage. It looks like he has to get out of there. But just having that patrol over there is so important because the soldier can easily spam down a level 3 sentry gun. And uh, Lidush did get a level 3 sentry gun up, so I'm very impressed with um, what I've been seeing about him. I was talking again to Medawi before the game, and uh, he said that one of these, that uh, 
Lelouch was one of these kind of like sleeper pickups that they picked up mid-season. He had a really good engineer tryout, and then he's just been completely solid with great DM and, as we can see, great engineer um, sense. And uh, the Central Guns staying up, even though it takes a ton of sticky stickies from the blue Uber. Own Caspian gets caught out and goes down to Profit right there, who uh, gives him little mailbox action. And so a nice defense right there. Yeah, uh, and something about Lelouch is that he really only came from Silver, so it's definitely really interesting to see somebody who hasn't really played at a high level be able to be stuck into a higher division and be able to succeed. And again, that's something that's so fantastic about this team is because all these guys, or at least most of them from Aces and the Gamers, were in Silver last season. They played Summer Season in Silver, I think went 6 and 2. And, you know, they adapted great to gold. They worked really hard and got up there to match, you know, the people that have been gold for several seasons now. I think that's definitely a moral to take away from this season, regardless of how Aces and the Gamers finish, that just able to work their way up, improve, and it's completely earned, completely legitimate. Oh man, what a bomb! It wasn't even a bomb, it was Ace, it was Ace just getting a flank on Caspian, who goes down right there. A really nice understanding of the map and uh, utilizing these hallways that, uh, that, that CG just was not watching. Definitely something that, that's what you want your flank to be doing, is holding down that entire hallway. Because with that hallway, you shut off that, that complete house, as well as the, the absolute flank there, that goes almost directly to the forward spawn. So being able to hold that as a scout and soldier is very essential for a team. Wow, so where is CG and what's happening here? And it's something like, they just, they're a Sixes team, they're not used to Highlander, they're not used to Payload, so they're really struggling with, where can we hold, where do we push from, because every single time they try to make a decision with pushing into third, they've just been denied completely. Especially with a map like this, that can be so choky, and you know, this points can be so stalemate when you hit like third and fourth point. I mean, that's basically what we're going to be seeing from a team that hasn't played Payload very much. This is a map that can do only, you can only do better on it with practice because it's so complicated and there's so many approaches to these choke points. Yeah. Looks like Lelouch did go down to a headshot from John Milter so that Sentry Gun went down shortly thereafter. Blue Uber is popped, but Red is going to pop their Uber to try to stop this cart. And, uh... Nice idea right there, because that, of course, is going to change the spawn locations. There is a scout on the cart, and Goku will get the cap right there. Yeah, the second you see the blue team start to really push into third, and you've got that, they're gonna cap this, that's when you need to get out. Because if you don't get out, you're going to die. Because their spawn is gonna be right in front of your old spawn, and you're just gonna get cut out, and you're gonna get killed. And this is where I like to see engineers running mini centuries, because it can be really difficult. Uh, it's really easy to put a lot of pressure, which we're seeing from you right now, they're putting a lot of pressure. And with mini centuries, you're really, you're giving up a, a good defense for a lot of damage. And damage in Highlander is everything. Absolutely, I see. Yeah, Lelouch struggling to get up a level 3 in this, uh, what has become the more popular position on the ramp, but uh, just tons of st spam and uh, pills coming in from. Uh, Dumbo Man Rex, that he's just not able to do anything, so falling back to last, which is a good move at this point. But they have about 7 minutes, 55 seconds, yeah, for 4 points. That's that's pretty good time still, but they can definitely, um, Zed can definitely still hold on for at least another minute or two here at last. I mean, it's a good time just because it's really difficult to push into these last 3 points, but it's definitely not a time that you want to be looking at for only 4 points. It's true, especially because Blue Medic actually just went down. Cooper's popping red, hopefully trying to get some picks here. Now I've got to mention, for Crank Gaming, they did exactly what they needed to to go through fourth point there. Because the point is so wide open and so spacey, and there's just so much room to get into to get the cap, they did exactly what they wanted to do. You know, they got through third point, they just steamrolled into fourth, they took as much ground as possible, and they didn't let them put up that gun. And even now, although we see Zed defending here, they probably won't be able to defend here for long since they did get the cap. And for those that are just tuning in, the score currently right now is Zed winning one nothing. Yeah, so really the burden is on Cranked Gaming as they try to get a fast time here on Swiftwater, but the, that opportunity is slowly slipping through their fingers as they're over eight and a half minutes right now. Center Gun is already set up, and you know Lelouch is uh, definitely on top of keeping that alive. Card is still being pushed, it hasn't even made its way down the ramp yet, and uh, yeah, Melon, like you were saying, they did a good job of preventing 
Frank Gaming did a good job of preventing anything from being set up here, but they just didn't do a good job of following through, and pushing that cart would have been one of those ways to follow through. And his first round. And this is where a lot of teams tend to struggle, where they want to hold that house, but at the same time you need to put a lot of pressure and a lot of damage on that cart, because it's really easy for a spy, a scout, or an engineer to just kind of walk into that cart and push it right into last. That's what we just see um, McCharger trying to do, and I love it because that's how I play NG on offensive. Offensively, is just sit on the cart and crouch. Um, but it's only going to get you so far when you have uh, players of this caliber on defense who know these uh, alternate ways to take out whoever is on the cart. Both Ubers are popped. Um, Red's going to last a little bit longer, but not able to do too much with that as Crank Gaming not going to commit too much because they're out of position with their pop. Just gonna yeah, this, say, is, this is something that's really struggling with Highlanders, like, both teams don't have their Uber yet, uh, for the most part, like, in sixes, you really want to be able to just kind of go right in and get a medic pick or get some picks, but, like, there's just really nothing you can do, you're pretty much just gonna have to keep tapping that card as much as you can before it goes in, and hope that your scout or your soldier or your sniper or your spy is able to get a pick on the opposing medic. McCharger again, just trying to touch the cart right there. Goes down to a nice headshot from Mafio. Um, snipers love this last positioning because it gives such a nice sight lens to anyone who's coming to touch the cart. It goes and takes down Bosch there as well. The cart is getting perilously close, but those last few feet make all the difference. We do have this Uber coming in. The Centric is only at a level one. Probably won't be able to stay alive here much longer. Indeed, it does go down. Uh, Red Med gets caught up uh, in front of the Red Spy, and it looks like he will, no, will not be able to finish off Caspian, who's uh, dangerously alone right now. But the cart is not capped yet, and that's the most important part right there for for both teams. It's perilously close, though. Yeah, this is where you start putting your heavy on the point, and this is where you also see players falling into that hole. And this is why I love Swiftwater. We're going to have this crazy last minute defense. Medway is about 70. He's about 96%. He got an Uber saw in there. Take down John Milter. He's going to have an Uber to pop onto the cart if necessary, if needed. He's actually taking a lot of damage now from McCharger, so he had to pop his Uber. They're going to try to do something. No, they won't be able to do anything with this. Oh man, the nice play right there from the NG on the offensive team. McCharger, wow. Yeah, it looks so, like right there MJ wanted to make a play on the heavy, but he just decided to back up. Just didn't have enough charge or nobody to really kind of support him there. Yeah, and uh, oh, Spy in the car gets a nice backstab right there on Carl. No one can get him out. There he goes. Bosch falls into the pit. And the cart is safe for another day, but oh my goodness, so very close. And this... I love Swiftwater. I just love Swiftwater. <laughs> it's definitely just as good as watching Upward. Yeah, the, uh, the drama of it falling into a pit definitely helps. Servo takes down the sentry gun. It looked like Lularge was on it. Uh, now we have the Fist of Steel out by a uh, car right uh -huh. there trying to defend the cart. Everybody's on the cart for red. Everybody on blue as well. It looks like uh, Silver and Real will get the ultimate push in there, but the, with a time of 12 minutes and 30 seconds. And that's what you want to see from a team in Swift Waters. You need absolutely every single person on your team to just rush for that point. Because then it puts the opposing team to just do the exact same thing. And it just comes down to which team wins. And there's really no reason why one team wins. It just happens that way. There's no reason why? If there's no reason why, then well, cast yeah, less well, casters are out of a job. Well, if you have all nine players just rush the cart, it pretty much just, it's, you're in a, a DM server, really. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And you'd think that would favor the Sixes players, but, uh, well, I mean, I guess ultimately it did, but we will see. Going to check out this first build here out of McCharger, and I'm already curious as to his strategy because he is running a regular wrench and he's building on this platform in a very forward p Okay, he's destroying that. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, it looks like they're telling him to build exactly where Leilouche was playing. Oh so, my... And he's playing a little more defensively here, actually, going right for the, uh, the, med uh, the ammo pack. From what I can, uh, in front of I've heard, uh, Crank Gaming actually doesn't scrim at all, so they might be making up some strategy on the spot here. <laughs> Should be interesting, but you know, I, we'll see. We'll see. I, I did have a talk with John Milter yesterday, and I had to remind him that the uh, Grand Finals was today. But, um... Oh boy. Oh my god. Uh, it speaks to how far, you know, DM and, um, can take you.
But how far can it really take you? Right now, they are up against a time of 12 minutes and 10 seconds. Remember, if Craig Gaming doesn't push this all the way to the end in less than that, Maybe they Zed. will be going home. Zed's got to be the I team to mean, push yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sorry about that, obviously. And 12 minutes is definitely a really good time for you to be able to push into. So they should feel a little comfortable heal here, not really like... Uh, feel pressure to, to get any sort of caps. You're not really going to want to feel pressure until the fourth and fifth point. Well, see, there's nothing in tunnel. Uh, it is okay. It is far back there, like you said. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, it's I definitely guess an we'll interesting wait. hold by McCharger here in the rest of Crank Gaming. I think my problem is that if you look at what the Sentry is looking at, it's mostly looking at this pole and this large amount of scenery and only has about maybe um 60 percent of um room to shoot and it goes down immediately right there yeah, this arab just destroys it very easy to spam out and force the uber and they're just they weren't able to really get any sort of a good defense on there here comes uber for blue pushing through the tunnel trying to focus on this heavy looks like uh, caspian will get away alive the heavy's still alive finally finally shirt goes down right there but uh, occupied a lot of the time of that Uber, so not able to get the positioning that they wanted to out of that. Um, but Zed certainly keeping that cart rolling, which is so important, that momentum of the cart. Uh, times three all the way, even if you have, you know, um, half an hour on the time on the clock. You should still get times three on that cart. Yeah, you always want your engineer and your scout pushing that cart. Looks like Queen Gaming is actually in a lot of trouble right here. They're all caught outside of spawn, including I think the medic actually oh. made it through. Yeah. Yeah, but half of them are just waiting there. <laughs> They're, they're realizing now that they can't go through that door now. Welcome to Swiftwater. It's definitely going to hurt their defense because now they don't have spam into that choke outside of the soldier. Oh man, Goku was in on Meadowy and we'd seen that several times before in this match, but some nice defense kept him alive. Now we have Spyro in on Meadowy, but again, keep it staying alive with some nice defense from his, uh, this time's Pyro. Yeah, and yeah, uh, Heavy getting in there. Zed needs to play a little more aggressive here. It looks like they're going to drop their Heavy because he wanted to go in, but there was really nobody else there to support him. Looks like they might actually be able to get the cap here without using Uber at all, while well, they desperately hold out that spawn. Their medic is caught out of the spawn, and so he's going to have to force his Uber here and hope to get out. Uh, interesting, uh, oh man, I just saw Red Spy getting some of that last minute Uber from Medowee before he ran into spawn and realized the spy couldn't follow him. <laughs> um, but at least Medowee is alive, so that's what Zed wants. Still, John Milter is at this third point, trying to get some headshots as Blue is uh, trying to get back onto this cart. Um, but he does go down, gets a mail call, if you will. And uh, Zed looking in a really good position. Nine minutes left to get these last two points. And of course, there is a challenge therein, but... Um, they have great momentum going now. Yeah, now with 9 minutes left on the clock, you have a lot of time to push into the last two points. But if you remember their defense, they were able to defend these these last two points for pretty much 6 to 8 oh, minutes. Oh, beautiful reflect by Prophet there. He actually saved Medowee from a triple rocket bomb by Blue's Medic there. By Red's yeah. Medic. Red on Soldier? Red Soldier on Blue. I, yeah, just Sir <laughs> just Talking is hard. It's difficult. Talking is hard. <laughs> No, but that was great. Server was trying to get in there. Medway has just been getting so much better protection this time around. And oh, but a huge sticky comes in by the Rex, who is uber charged. Got oh, the wow. sticky around the corner, taking down Carl and Medway. That is huge. It was actually a drop on Medway. And both the yes. scout and the spy jumped on Caspian. The Caspian was able to get around, but then no. Scarab comes out of nowhere and gets a sticky on Caspian and drop him. These demos have stickies that like turn at 90 degrees. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, Caspian definitely made a good play there at first with Ubering Rex and going right into them because they had charge where Medui didn't. And so because of that, Zed and the rest of the gamers were pretty much overextending and had nowhere to go. So for that part, like there was just nothing Zed could do. But on top of that, they were overextended themselves because by the time their Uber was over, the rest of Zed was able to jump on top of Caspian and get him to die. So now we see the Uber advantage working for Medui. Now I've got to wonder how willing Cranked Gaming is to go off the regular metagun and go maybe crits or something. I mean, we don't see it here, but uh, this is just speculation, which is fun to do if you're not playing. 
But um, what? Uh... Oh, anyway, you don't have time for speculation. It comes upon by the Uber Double Man going after Caspian, taking uh, half damage right there, but not able to finish him off. Uh, Zed coming in very strong. Another bomb in by the soldier, but Caspian gets his Uber just in time to stay alive. Nice reflex and air blasting is coming up from Profit it means that Uber is not able to do too much. But you know, what? Goku cleaned up on the side, so. Yeah, they knew they knew they had an Uber advantage, so they had to take advantage of it as soon as possible. So that's why we saw such an aggressive play there by Zed. Uh, and it almost worked out for them, other than the fact that Caspian was able to pretty much kite that and get his own charge right away. And it looked like McCharger there actually lost connection, and so they had no engineer on the fence there. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can have some sort of engineer build up on last. Oh man. So rough, and at this point I don't think they can get to level 3, so it's gonna be a little... Gotta be a mini, which is... Oh, gotta be the worst, and I don't think that uh, McCharger has that on his loadout right now, so he's gonna have to go back to spawn, but it doesn't matter, there's so many blue players right here in the uh, lobby of the entrance to the hole that uh, Red's not gonna be able to get up any sort of defense unless they get a, a nice clear here of the cart, but... Uh, Zed just being relentless right now, Crank Gaming trying to get uh, some stickies onto the cart, and finally they've stopped it. But uh, 5 minutes and 45 seconds left for Aces and the Gamers. Yeah, they pretty much just need to do exactly what Crank Gaming did, and that's pretty much just keep pressure away from the cart, and then have your flank glasses just kind of suicide for it until it gets close enough to where you can have all 9 of your players just to rush it and force their team to just jump on top of you. Oh, Meadow, we dropped right there, I think. Servo getting a crazy flank. I wasn't even... Not even sure where he was positioned, but uh, Meadow, we had that back and forth, over. if I saw correctly. There's an Angoku right before him to try to get a pop, but... By pop, I mean, I think they're just trying to get a pick. I'm not so sure if they have Uber. Oh, okay. Uh, regardless, though, it's a big move right there, as now Caspian has his 100% Uber, and it uh, looks like Blue's just going to try to keep tapping the cart, really don't have the support they need to attack the uh, the combo that is holding near, but uh, not quite in the center. And that's what you really need that Uber for. Yeah, especially if the opposing team has Uber, because it looks like all they want to do is just keep pressure on the cart. And Looks like they're not really even going for a medic pop on red. They're just trying to keep pressure on the cart to force them to keep their focus there. Now, why don't you think they're pressuring med right now? Why do they, they want Caspian to pop? I mean, they obviously want Caspian to pop, but they're not going for that. I mean, if I'm in their shoes, probably what they're thinking is that cart's close enough to the point where they have enough time to be able to just kind of keep tapping it as long as if it doesn't go backwards, they'll, they'll be fine. They do so they have a very they, comfortable time right now, about yeah, 4 minutes like, 11 seconds. They feel like that they don't have to get pressure on their combo, and that was oh, a big play oh there for no. So, Meta we going down again, just as they're coming in, and uh, only 4 up right now, 4 aces and the gamer, so so much for that push. <laughs> oh, Lelouch is trying to try and come in here, and he does tap the card forward a little bit more, but as we saw last round, it is so hard to get that card down. Uh, interesting, Mafio did get a head pick, headshot right there at McCharger, so the uh, engineer is down, and the sentry gun goes down. Um, the server just, uh, or, I'm sorry, as Blue uh, Aegis right there, taking down that sentry gun with no NG protection. And the Uber is finally popped for red right there as they clear off the cart. Yeah, and MJ made a good move and a good decision there. He decided to run the, the bonk, the atomic bonk punch, and uh, which allows you to basically be invulnerable as a scout. And he just sat there right on top of the cart, forcing the entire red team to drop down with them so that he couldn't push that cart once his bomb was over. And by that time, there was enough pressure on the red combo that they were forced. And we did see a player fall into the hole. It looks like it was the pyro. So we talked about... You know, red player, the red player's dropping in, we have That's seen the pyro, you know, get a suicide there. Now we do have the blue uber coming in, and this is what Zed hopes to be their last push. Um, getting some frags, but are they the important ones that count? Caspian is still alive, he has- no, he goes down to a nice bombing from Aegis, and that is going to be the end. Congrats to that Aces the and game. the Gamers, gold champions for season 11. Wow. I mean, it was a much better game than all of us expected, especially Zed. I mean, they went into this game not really knowing if they were going to get rolled, or they didn't really just—they didn't know what to expect. This is a team that has a bunch of main players on their roster. 
the only team really with as many main players as them is Street Hoops, and they're currently undefeated in, in Platinum. So it's definitely really intimidating when you're a new team in gold looking at a team full of ESA main players. And also, you know, another thing about Crank Gaming is they've been changing their roster for a lot of the season, actually. They, they've almost had a new player every week from what I've seen. And, you know, starting out of the season, they're ten, they were 10-1 and one before this match. They're only lost to Seven Years Dungeon. But looking at their roster when they played Seven Years Dungeon at the beginning of the season, it was almost complete off-classing compared to what they ended with, you know, with more ESEA mains on their main classes on their Highlander team. Yeah, we had Goku on heavy back then. Yeah, so it looks like uh, Crink Gaming actually started taking a lot more seriously and just putting more, uh, I guess, their heavy players on their best classes when the season went on. First loss really ticked them off, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it was a good map choice. Um, smart plays out of Aces and the Gamers to um, choose Swiftwater, which uh, I think we did see a little bit of that coming into play in terms of uh, spawns and whatnot. But... Um, I think we will forego interviews because the Platinum game is still going on right now and um, as I know there's over 1200 viewers so I definitely want to encourage oh. everyone to go over to that game and um, let esports know that Team Fortress 2 definitely has a, a viable audience base so I'll post that in chat but um, again thank you so much to Brick and thank you so so much to Melon for helping me out on this cast. I mean Kip, guys do you have anything else to say? Uh, other than shoutouts, I guess uh, shout out to my friend Fishy Kitty. Oh, and shout out to my king team, the Kitties, and all the friends that we have in there. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, guys. Um, enjoy your UGC off season, and we'll hope to see you next season in season 12. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good day. Thank you.